Good morning, I'm Anne-Marie from Spot On, helping you to pass your theory test. And I've come on here today to do this live video to go through exactly what you need to do to pass your theory test first time. So is that something you're interested in? Put a comment below, let me know what it is that you feel that you actually struggle with with your theory test. But today, I'm going to go through it all, exactly what you need to do, what is it all about? And how can you go after, um, when you go back and do your test, how can you go and pass it and feel confident to pass it on your first attempt? So, are you struggling with your theory test? Let me know. Do you feel like you'll never get through it? I've spoken to lots of people who just think that the, the basically in despair of it they don't know what they're going to do and how they're going to get through it and some people maybe this is you have actually stopped driving lessons and stopped learning to drive because they're so fed up they can't get through the theory part of, of the driving is that you or is that somebody that you know let me know and just imagine how great it would be for you or for the person that you know if you knew you could pass it next time just imagine how fantastic that would actually feel. I mean, the pass rates for the theory test are at an all-time low. So if you're one of the people that can't get through it, you can't pass it, you're really struggling with it, you don't know what to do, you're not on your own. In fact, it's 47% of people pass it. That means 53% of people fail it. More than half people fail it so like I say you're not on your own and I'm going to go through with you today exactly what you need to do to pass it so first of all a bit about me well as I said before my name is Anne-Marie Winterburn and I run a driving school um, I'm now based in Nutsford but I used to be based in Dorset um, I have I, I train driving instructors um, and I'm an audit registered trainer I um, deliver driving lessons in, manu in yeah, manual and automatic cars. I deliver theory workshops um, as well because I recognised many years ago that people were failing and people weren't really getting the help that they needed. Um, I have an online theory workshop, I have an online driving workshop and I have an online um, workshop for driving instructors who are training to become driving instructors so that's a little bit about me i've trained my husband and my son to be driving instructors as well so we're a family business and i really want to help learners i want to make sure people go to the theory test and the driving test 100 percent ready so they know that they can pass and that's why i have such great pass rates um, the new theory test, that, sorry, the theory test and the new date for it now because it's been postponed again um, because of coronavirus, you can take it any time from the 30th of May at the moment. So now is such an amazing time. You've got these three or four weeks, an amazing time to get fully ready for it and that's why I'm on here today Saturday morning is a lovely day isn't it um, but I'm sitting here to help you to know exactly what it is that you need to pass so you can use this opportunity to to um, to enroll onto my workshop to watch my videos on YouTube to watch my videos on my Facebook page um, like I say, to join my workshop so you can know exactly how to pass it. Um, so if you think this is going to be useful for um, for other people, then please give it a heart, give it a like, give it a thumbs up and share. Let's get this message out, let's get this knowledge out to other people um, so that they can pass as well. Um, my online workshop, a little bit about that first. I have been delivering workshops for years and I wrote another online work, uh, another workshop. I sort of um, I rewrote it a couple of years ago. Um, I was having 
great pass rates but I wanted to take it a bit more seriously and do workshops for groups of people not just individuals for groups of people um, which has gone amazingly um, in fact every single person who has completed my full workshop every single person 100% of people have gone on to pass on their next attempt so it works and because of lockdown and I had to cancel some workshops, I thought, okay, let's get this workshop as an online workshop. I already had a driving online workshop, so let's make a theory online workshop. And over the last few weeks, of everything that I've been teaching, I've made mini videos, worksheets, activities, facts lists, audios, and the full question bank and loads of Hazard Perception Clips videos. And as well as all that, I have included techniques for doing the Hazard Perception Clips. Really simple to use techniques to make sure that you score well on each clip. And tactics for answering the, has, um, the multiple choice questions as well. Because there is a certain tactic you can use to make it so much easier. So as well as having the knowledge, you've got tactics for answering questions as well. And then on top of that, um, in my bonus section, I'm an NLP master practitioner and I have multiple techniques to help you to get rid of anxiety, to help you to feel more confident, to help you get rid of fears and phobias as well as being a, a hypnotherapist, there's a hypnotherapy audio in there as well. So I've included some free techniques that you can use to help yourself go into your test feeling no anxiety and feeling really confident. And then if you listen to my um, hypnotherapy audio for a few nights before your test, it helps you as well to get rid of anxiety and to feel relaxed. So all of that is what is included in my online workshop. It's only £29.99, so just the cost of one driving lesson. Um, like I say, you get another app as well, so, which gives you the full question bank and loads of hazard perception clips and mock tests. So you know you're completely test ready. So I am confident, completely confident, there's everything in my workshop that you need to pass your theory test. And it doesn't matter whether you like to learn through videos, whether you like to write things down, whether you like to see things, whether you like to hear things, whether you like to get a good feeling about things. It doesn't matter how you like to learn. I've included that in the workshop to help you. So firstly, the theory test. The questions in the theory test are based on the information in three books. So there's this book, The Highway Code and know your traffic signs and driving the essential skills. So the questions are all based on the information in those three books. A really good idea to have a copy of those books. It's not essential, but it is a good idea. They help with the theory test, the help with your driving, and the help after you after you've passed your test as well as a driver. In this this book here, the sections on eco driving, the sections on motorway driving, sections on tunnels and accidents and incidents. So a lot of driving on snow and ice. So lots of things that you can refer to after you've passed your test. So three great books, but that's what the, that's where the questions are based on the information in those three books. So you're going to be asked 50 questions in your multiple choice and you need to get 43 of them right. Now how some people go wrong is that they will do a mock test and they'll get at least about 30 right. And I think, well, I've got 30 out of 50, I'm nearly there. I can go and take my test. Well, I would say that anybody can get 30 odd questions right because they are just common sense. For example, you may get asked a question 
along the lines of somebody beeps their horn aggressively at you what should you do wave your fist at them shout at them swerve in front of them or ignore them because you don't want to get yourself wound up because your driving will deteriorate well it's obvious what the answer is isn't it it's obvious that you need to ignore that person so you get that question right but you may get asked a question on aquaplaning and smart motorways and um, your tread depth on your um, your car tyres and things like that and, and loading your vehicle and towing caravans and all things like that are questions that you need to really understand. You don't want to become a driver and not understand these things. Um, and they're all included, everything's included in these mini videos and worksheets and quizzes and audios and activities that I have to offer. So you need to get 43 out of 50 for your multiple choice questions. And, and then there's hazard perception. Do you know what that is? Do you understand the hazard perception? So you're going to watch 14 one minute clips and you're watching it as if you are the driver and you're looking out for hazards. I'll go through a bit later about how you're going to go through it, but you, you, you're going to watch 14 clips um, looking for 15 hazards and you need to score 44 out of 75 to pass. Now you need to pass both parts on the same day. So if you fail one part, then you've failed your test. If you've passed the questions, but failed the hazard perception, you have failed the test. You need to retake both parts again. So really important that you are fully prepared for both parts of the test. As I said before, if you feel that this is interesting and this has got good information for you or for anybody that you know, then please give a thumbs up, please give a heart, and please share my video. Because I'm on here on a Saturday morning, it's a lovely day outside, um, but I want to help you to pass your theory test on your first attempt. So I'm on here telling you everything that I have to offer and giving you all this information about the theory test. So let's talk a bit more about the theory questions. You are going to get asked 50 questions and they are multiple choice questions. So you'll be asked a question and you'll be given four possible answers. Read the question really carefully. You want to make sure that you they're asking whether they're asking you what should you do or what shouldn't you do, what must you do, what must you not do. So you want to read the question really carefully. Think to yourself, what what do I think is the right answer? Before you have a look at the answers, think what do I think is the right answer? And then look at the answers and see if your answer is actually there. Because you'll find most of the time that it becomes fairly easy if you do it that way. In my workshop, I'll go through in more detail, more tactics for answering the questions and making it easier and easier and easier for you. Um, but yes, you need 50 questions, you need 43 of them right. So let's have a look at a typical question. I went through a typical and easy question with you earlier on. So let's have a look at another typical question for you. Okay. Why are place names painted on the road surface? Why do you think place names? You know, you're driving along, you're coming up to maybe, maybe you're coming along to a busy roundabout, and you see place names, the name of a place, painted on the road surface. Why would that be? What do you think the answer is here? Before you read the answers, have a look at the answers. Have, have, have a think in your head what you think the answer might be. Now you've thought about it. 
Now you can have a look at the answers. Is it to restrict the flow of traffic? Would it be to warn you of oncoming traffic? Would it be to prevent you, to stop you from changing lanes? Or would it be to help you select the correct lane in good time? So there, you can see there's a couple of answers that is not going to be the right answer. And you probably can see that your answer was there in the first place. Why do they, would they have a place name painted on the road surface? So you think, well, I can see a sign for Warrington. Warrington's where I want to go. I'll get into the lane that's going to take me to Warrington. So the answer there is obviously to help you select the correct lane in good time. So that's what a typical question looks like. And you get 50 of them. Like I say, you need to get 43 right um, in, your, in your test. So if you want to know more about my workshop, then leave a message, leave a comment below. I will put a link to my workshop in the comments. Um, like I say, it's only 29.99 and you have absolutely everything you need plus access to all of the questions in the question bank. So what's a hazard perception clip look like? So first of all, a hazard is something that's going to make you as a driver take action. So you watch the clips as if you are driving and you're looking at the road ahead of you and you should have something called funnel vision. So where your vision is go starting here and it's going out and out and out. So you're looking at the pavements, you're looking at the side roads, you're looking at houses and junctions to the left and right of you. And you're thinking what could happen? What's happening? And what could happen? So an example, what's happening? There are cars parked along the left side of the road. So what could happen? What do you think could happen? What could happen from between those parked cars or with those parked cars? So what kind of things could happen? Well, a car could pull away, couldn't it? It could start driving out, not check his blind spot and drive out in front of you. A car door could open. Somebody could step out from between the parked cars. So you've seen the parked cars. You know that all of those things could happen and that's what you're looking out for. And then, if you're looking for it, you're so much more likely to spot it. If you've got tunnel vision, so you're just looking down the centre of the road, you're not going to have an idea that any of these things could happen. But if you've got funnel vision, then you're going to spot these things. You're going to be looking out for it. So as it starts to happen, then you're spotting it and then you click your mouse, okay? You can click your mouse several times. I wouldn't be wanting to click more than sort of eight or 10 times for a clip, but don't worry too much. If you see something happening and you click for the hazard, and then it doesn't become a hazard, you can ignore that click, it doesn't matter. Just keep on looking for the clip, um, for the hazard. So like I say, with your hazard perception test, you are watching it as if you are the driver and you are looking for hazards, things that might make you take action. It might make you break or swerve. It might make you stop. Okay, so any of those things, that's what you're looking for. So what kind of things, people stepping out in front of you, balls um, like a football rolling out into the road in front of you, um, if there's a bus, pedestrians could step out in front of you. If you're on a country road, then expect to see pedestrians walking on your side of the road. Expect to see cows or sheep crossing the road. Expect to see cyclists. Expect to see a slow moving tractor. If you're expecting it, or half expecting it, then you're looking out for it and you will spot it as a driver and you will spot it in your hazard perception test. 
and in that test you can score a maximum of five for each hazard. So you, for your hazard you'll either score zero or one or two or three or four or five. If you don't click in the scoring window at all, you'll score zero. If you click somewhere within that scoring window, you'll score one, two, three, four, or five. Um, I, I go through it in much more detail um, and give you some great demonstration clips in, in my workshop. But as so long as you know that you can score zero or one, two, three, four, or five, for a hazard. Um, so don't be afraid of clicking more than once for a hazard. It doesn't matter if you've clicked. All you don't want to do, you do not want to click in a pattern. So what do I mean by that? I'll use my mouse here. So if you go click and click and click and click and click, and that's a pattern and the computer, the program would detect a pattern and give you a fail for that clip. So if you went click and click, click, then it wouldn't be a pattern. So the computer wouldn't be detecting a, a pattern there. So you would be fine. So don't, like I say, don't be afraid of clicking more than once, but don't click in a pattern. And then the final thing I want to talk, so I've talked about the questions and I've talked about the hazard perception clips. And that's the two parts of your test. Questions need to score 43 out of 50. Hazard perception need to score 44 out of 75. So as so long as you're getting threes and fours, then you will pass it. The other part of doing the theory test that people struggle with is their nerves, their anxiety. So they know, you know what to do, you know the answers to the questions, but being overly anxious, overly nervous, lacking confidence in yourself, that's where you are uh, let down. So in my workshop, I go through some techniques, some anchoring techniques, um, with you um, and methods of getting rid of your anxiety um, and I can do that through the workshop or I can do that face to face or over Skype or Zoom at the moment because we can't meet face to face and really easily done over, um, over the computer. So if you are feeling anxious um, then let me know, let me know how you feel um, and I will let you know what I can do to help you. Um, or you can uh, um, put you onto my confidence, uh, my um, confidence workshop or my um, Facebook page, which has some free content there for you, free videos in which you can go in and you can help yourself. Um, give me a thumbs up if you're watching. Give me a heart, please, and share this video. Um, let's get lots more people knowing exactly what you need to pass your theory test on your first attempt. So I've talked about your questions, I've talked about your hazard perception clips and I've talked about your confidence um, and your anxiety. So when to take your test? Go through the revision first. So if you're doing it on your own, Go through my videos. I post videos every day on uh, this Facebook page. So go through the videos and go through the books. And use a really good app which has questions on there for you to answer. Or go through my workshop which has absolutely everything you need to pass on your first attempt, including all the questions. And when you've done all that, when you've done all your preparation, then take your mock tests. 
And what a lot of people do, and it's because they don't know, but a lot of people just go and take mock tests. Now imagine you're at school or college or university. You don't just go and take the exam, do you? You don't just go and do mock tests and then go and do your history exam. You go to lessons first. You get given the information first. You learn the information first. When you've learned it, then you go and do some mock tests and then you go and do your exams. It's exactly the same with your theory test. You should be doing your um, lessons first. Learn the content first. And then do your mock tests. When you're doing well in your mock tests, so I would say you have passed at least three to five mock tests with a good score. When you have passed three to five mock tests, then I would say you are ready for taking your test. Pass your hazard perception clips as well. So you should be scoring three, four or five for most of your hazard perception clips. Don't worry if a couple of them you're scoring less. Don't worry about that. If you're, if for most of your hazard perception clips you're scoring three, four or five, then you're ready to take your test. So when should I take my test? When I've done all my work, when I've done my coursework, and then I've passed three to five mock tests. And when I'm scoring three, four or five for most of my hazard perception clips, then you're ready to take your test. Make sure you book your test through the official government site. I will post the link actually in the comments. Make sure you book your test through that site. Um, and then on test day, before you go, do some of my confidence techniques. Um, first of all, know you can pass. You've done the work. You know now you can pass. You've passed your mock test. The real test is no different. Have confidence in yourself and you will get through it. You've done the work. You've passed your mock test. You know you can pass. Make sure you take your photo card license with you and make sure you're on time. They ask you to be 10 minutes early. I would advise you to get there at least 10 minutes early. There could be holdups you see on the way. So get there early and take your photo card license. If you're late or if you don't have your license, you won't take your test. They, they won't allow you to take your test. So make sure you've got those things with you. Okay, so that is my um, talk to you, my live today to you in how to pass your theory test on your first attempt. Please put any questions in the comments and I will answer them. Join my online workshop, which has everything you need, all the knowledge you need in any way you want it to be delivered through videos, through audios, through worksheets, through activities. All the questions in the question bank is included when you join my workshop. Not only all that, you do have access to an instructor as well. So you can ask me questions. We can get on a quick Zoom call. If there's something you really don't understand, then you can contact me and um, I will explain it in more detail to you. I'll make sure that you do understand it so that you can answer a question in any way it's worded. You can answer the question because you really understand the topic. I hope that helps. I hope that was interesting for you. I hope you find it useful. Um, please like and share. Please ask me any questions. Um, I'll be on again tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I haven't decided yet. But Monday to Friday, I, I always do. At 11 o'clock, I will come on live. And um, I'll do Q live Q&A with a bite-sized theory. Um, lesson for you. So like a mini um, talk, five, five to ten minute talk on a certain subject, on a certain topic that you will be asked in your theory test. 
Um, so I may see you tomorrow and I'll see you on Monday at 11. Enjoy the weekend. I think the, the weather's going to deteriorate from tomorrow. It's a lovely day today. Well, it is here anyway. We're having a lovely sunny day. So enjoy your weekend and um, I will see you again soon. Bye.